What's up, everybody? I'm Jay Dreamers, and thanks for joining me tonight. We're doing our Truth in Movie segment, and tonight's movie is called Coma, as you can see right there. Um, I know it's been a while, right? I always, I always get nervous when it's been a while. So, uh, hi, what's up to everybody? Evan Scorpio is in the chat, Eyes to See, Third Eye Survivor, Udara, and Brandon so far. Well, hey, what's up? I'm glad you guys could make it. Sorry it's been a minute, but I've, I've been having some computer issues and I'm working on trying to like save up to get a, a new computer that can handle all the stuff that I'm trying to make it do. So, Sound Vibes is in the chat, says hello. Unstance, what's up everyone? How's it going? Are you guys ready to crack open this movie? I don't know if you've seen it. And some some people in the last stream were like, um, are there spoiler alerts? Yes, there's definitely, I'm, I'm gonna reveal the whole movie. We're gonna talk about all of it. So on all of my Truth and Movie segments, there's spoiler alerts, okay? I don't feel like I need to say that when I'm clearly talking about the movie. <laughs> But yes, for those of you who have not seen it, I'm going to be showing you pictures, breaking it down. Hey, Dennis. Dennis is in the chat. He says Deadpool came out. I heard. <laughs> That's totally right. I was uh, Deadpool for Halloween. For those of you who follow my channel, um, if you're on the phone and you click on stories, there's a stories tab. I upload random stuff to stories all the time. And I uploaded my uh, Halloween where I won a Halloween costume contest as Deadpool. Anyways, it's pretty cool. Check that out and uh, leave a comment if you want. All right, so let's jump into this movie, Coma. Hold on. Okay, what is Coma about? Coma is about heaven. Coma is about the fractal verse. okay? So if you're new to my channel, I have an alternative cosmology. I talk about our world not being flat, not being spherical, not being uh, concave or convex. It's, it's basically a little piece of everything. And that's just me putting it together from ancient perspectives, various perspectives, different cosmologies, modern science, all kinds of stuff, right? So this movie perfectly shows what I've been describing as the macrocosm. That's the world that lies outside of our world, beyond the dome of the sky, beyond the heavens, the firmament, uh, the hammered out glass ceiling, whatever you want to call it. That's what this movie is about. It's talking about the heavens. And I've done many videos about why the heavens are white, the pearly gates, right? Or the pearlescent gates, which is pearlescent is like the color of space. Essentially, space is not black. Space is very bright and full of color and life and vibrant and white, as we all know and have thought for quite some time, right? That's what this movie's about. And you'll see as we go on, basically, okay? There's a lot of other concepts in this movie, including the fractal verse and the greater reality. What is the greater reality? It's called it, okay? I call it the space brain. You could call it whatever you like to call it. But essentially, you're going to see in this movie that the fractal verse is made out of realms that are connected to one another. Space is not just empty orbs marbles bumping into one another, but it's all connected like synapses in the brain. And there's a reason for that. All right, let's check this out. So the movie opens up where there's this architect guy. He's the main character. And uh, hey, give me a thumbs up if like the audio and video are okay as well. I would appreciate it. Thank you. So he starts to build this sort of concept of his idea of like this heavenly type utopia, right? As you can see, everything is pearlescent. It's white, basically. That's because space is white and beings that come from space are usually white in nature. And in movies, they're depicted as a sort of off gray, shiny rainbow kind of uh, opalescent, pearlescent sort of color, sometimes a sort of dull color if they're more scary. And the movie starts off with the main guy, the architect, having this dream where he's in this car accident and you see the glass break. When you see the glass break in movies, that is telling you that some stuff is about to ha happen, okay? Because it represents the glass dome of our world. I don't know if it's glass. It's probably not glass. It's probably ice. It's probably made out of natural things like water and stuff. Anyways, um, but the that represents our dome, our sky opening, okay? The sky opens up occasionally from time to time. That's what the glass breaking symbolizes. It's, it's letting you know we are now going to show you what happens after the reset that happens to this world. 
So the glass breaks, you see little shards of it all over the place. They really zoom in on the glass. And when they zoom in on stuff in the movies, that's a huge breadcrumb for you that they're telling you something. This is symbolic. It's it's not just, you know, building up the moment or whatever. Ooh, there's glass everywhere or whatever. There's a reason why they show you this. These are all images that when put together build context for the story but not just the story of the movie it's a it's a deeper story it's an esoteric story that's being shared with us all right so then uh they zoom out and then they sort of show you that everything that he was dreaming about starts to kind of dissolve however the way it's dissolving i don't know if you can see it let me zoom in the way that it's dissolving forms this sort of pattern and this pattern is the fractal verse okay this is like you are here, okay? And there's like earth number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like a million earths, right? All these different hubs, all these different stations and places that are out there. You'll see, we'll talk about that uh, a little later. By the way, if you want to get my attention in the chat, um, and I did redo the credits, so just stick around for the credits. I put like four hours of work into it. All right, let's check it out. Let's see. All right, so then he zooms out. You can see that he's. this is his workroom, right? This is his concept of heaven. It's all white. And he's sleeping, right? So this concept of being asleep, the sleepers being in a coma, right? Thinking that you're in the real world and what world is the real world? That's sort of the greater question, the greater reality beyond the physical construct of the fractal verse itself or our local mesocosm, microcosm, or macrocosm right? The greater idea is that there is this God-like being that is asleep, okay? And having a dream about his or herself, essentially. And in order to do that, it has to trick itself into not remembering and splitting up into smaller and smaller and smaller versions. This is an age-old story across many different uh, religions and myths and stuff. So this shows him, the architect, asleep, right? He's dreaming and all of this stuff becomes reality. All right, so this is his room. I thought it was pretty cool. He's got a picture of Einstein, Leonardo da Vinci, and looks like Copernicus up here. So I, I always zoom in whenever they show like people's walls and stuff because they're all props, okay? These are all extra symbols to give you meaning for the deeper esoteric uh, value that the movie's giving to you, right? Now, he looks at his picture. He's actually dreaming right now. He thinks he's in the real world, but he's not. He's dreaming, or at least he thinks he's dreaming. That's the question, right? Is it a dream or is it a dream within a dream? And therefore it's all a dream, right? So he looks at this picture and the picture is all fuzzy. Some things are not completely there. Everything, he lifts up this paper and the fridge is like trying to piece itself together. Basically the things that are just out of his vision don't exist until he manifests them or desires to see them, which is really interesting too on a deeper level because some people have the idea that that happens to us. Things don't really exist until they come into our our mind or our field of view. I have questions about that, especially like, walk, you know, if you walk around with your eyes closed, clearly you bump into stuff. But I like the idea. I like that people are thinking outside of the box. Also, by the way, he's an architect and he builds buildings and stuff. But this is clearly a pyramid right here, right? And the pyramid represents the North Pole or Mount Maru, the plasma volcano in the middle. All right, so then he starts freaking out because everything's sort of dissolving, right? And he's like, oh, not, not everything's together. So he goes down the spiral staircase. This is another symbol in the movies that are telling you you're about to go through the top of our world, the dome, okay? When the dome opens up or when the sky opens up, however you like to call it, it creates a vortex, an energy vortex full of plasma. Those plasma conduits are realms vortexes, wormholes, Einstein, Rosen bridges, whatever you want to call them, they're windows, stargates into another place, other realms, other hubs and worlds that are out there in the fractalverse. And this is how it's symbolized, is this spiral staircase or subways or train stations, lots of different things like that. This is one of them though. And as you can see, it's green. Why is it green? Like, I've never been in a stairway that has like, you know, this green mist and stuff like that. They, they made it green purposefully because the color itself is speaking to you. It's combined with the symbol of the spiral staircase, which represents the exit to our world, okay, above the North Pole in the middle of our world, and the green lights of Aurora Borealis. So they're telling you you're going to enter into another world. And behold, there it is. 
There's the other world right there, right? Where did he go? Well, he went up. The spiral staircase represents going up the, the northern lights, up through the top of the dome, out of our world, into the macrocosm. And this is what he sees, right? Now, when you see, of course, this is a cartoonified version of it. So when you see a road that goes off into some other place, that is really a plasma conduit. The circuits of time on Bill and Ted, Doctor Who's wormhole, right? These are all just paths that are out there, energetic paths that take energy to and fro from place to place, okay? And this is what it looks like. I took a lot of pictures of this. So you're gonna see many different examples here. <laughs> What's up? Hey, what's up to everybody who just joined, by the way? Everybody who's in the chat right now. Hello. Welcome to my channel. I'm glad to see you guys. I love hanging out with everybody. Doc Michael is in the chat. What's up, dude? Vision in Christ says right on. Thank you. Uh, yeah, get lost in it says neurons. Totally on point. You're absolutely on point. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so as you can see, everything is connected out there, right? Every place is connected. This concept of space being just empty space and nothing is connected, it's all separate, it's all individual, that's a part of the illusion of separateness. That's how we see it and we perceive it now because we've been trained and brought up into a world and school system that teaches us to be separate and to divide and division, right? to divide and conquer one another. Then you get that whole pyramid scheme thing, right? When in reality, everything is literally connected, physically and spiritually and energetically connected, right? It's hard for some people to conceive of that just because of the teachings that we've been given. However, those are all of the ancient concepts that we built our culture and foundation and modern world upon. So we have to give them some credit. All right, so this guy looks back. As you can see, this guy's missing his head. Some of these people back here are deteriorated. This lady's missing her whole right shoulder right here. They're deteriorated because these people are not actually people. They're just memories, okay? They're non non players in the game, okay? They are they're just ghosts. They're phantoms. And many of you have seen that in our world today, right? Some people that have that lost like soulless kind of look in their eyes, right? They're gone. Like they're just on autopilot. They're a bunch of atoms and electrons just bouncing from place to place following their program, their television, whatever you want to call it. Um, some people might just be like that. Cosmic Drugs is in the chat and says, J Dreamers, I mentioned you in my video about the plasma apocalypse. I know I'm stumbled. I stumbled upon your channel for a reason. So thank you. Hey, thank you. You're very welcome. I appreciate it. Thanks for the shout out. All right, so we move on. I just want to show you some clips. This is an idea of what it looks like up there in the macrocosm, in the fractal verse, worlds connecting worlds. And this is shown not in just this movie. This is shown to you like in many different movies where they go through some sort of a portal. Like, for example, um, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse comes to mind, right? When they open up that portal and they peek through, like they see that it's not just empty space, it's all connected. It almost kind of resembles a beehive sometimes, sometimes a spider web. And this is why when the sky opens up, it looks like Grandmother Spider is coming down in the form of plasma, walking around the ground, grounding itself, right? And what else is this on? I saw this on the other movie that we did a review on, um, R.I.P.D., do you remember R.I.P.D.? Like whenever they got sucked up into the sky, went through that hole in the sky, and all of a sudden, poof, it was all connected out there, wasn't it? It looked like a big honeycomb or something with all these openings everywhere. So uh, there are these Reapers. They call them the Reapers in this movie. Now, I haven't fully, like, I can't, I don't feel like I've nailed the Reapers yet. However, let's, let's talk about these beings, okay? Basically, they've got like three legs and three arms, I think. Uh, they've got multiple appendages. So I believe that these reapers are symbolic on different levels. One, they symbolize phantozoids that live out there in space, okay, or whatever you want to call it, the macrocosm. Um, and those phantozoids tend to be sort of insect-like in nature, real long legs, multiple legs at times, right? There's different types, of course. But I think that that's maybe a piece of it. I believe it also represents plasma. And then it also has like the lights on the eyes, the three lights there. You see that? Like the dead lights, like Pennywise when he opens his mouth. 
and you see those dead lights, that's kind of like that too. So it, I believe it also represents the plasma. But then again, they're also there to destroy. And I've noticed this concept of this black goo in movies and the black goo is never good. Okay, it's never good. Black goo will like possess you. It'll turn you into venom. It'll change you. It'll make you murderous and hateful and upset and change your whole personality. Now the white substance or the milk, as I call it, that's symbolized in movies is the exact opposite. It's always life-giving. The white goo or whatever you want to call it is always something that brings life, right? You've got the black goo, which brings death, and then like the white milk, or I don't know what to call it, but they show that all over the place. And the white milk is representative of like space, right? And then the black goo is representative of that which is from space that comes into the black world or the dark world or the dark city. Our covered worlds that are shut off from the brilliance and the, the lights of space as we know it. All right, cool. Hope that makes sense. Let's keep going. All right, so this dude jumps off of one platform, one hub, and gravity acts real real strange in this in this place, okay? So gravity, basically gravity, and I know a lot of people have like, you know, there's no such thing as gravity. Bro, watch my channel. I know, okay? I just, I help people out, okay? I don't really care about wording as long as people get the message, all right? So if I say gravity or whatever, just chill out, all right? I'm on the same page. Anyway, so um, gravity... Uh, acts funny in different places. It follows the path of these memories, which is the ground or the land, right? So whatever shape they take, that's the way that gravity pulls. So when this dude jumps from one place to another, he's able to like float around basically as gravity changes. That's how our world works too. If you get closer to the middle or Rupus Negra, the North Pole, right? If you were to jump in because it opens up in the middle, um, then gravity would bend. It would change just like it does around the sky, around the very top. If you were to walk all the way around to the edge of the world, which I don't think there's an edge. I think it just kind of contours. I think you'd be able to walk all the way around until you were essentially upside down. And I believe it probably works like that in reverse underneath on the inner part of the earth. All right. So this guy stops. His friends jump. You think they're going to land in the water, but they float up. They get sucked up into the sky. Plasma apocalypse symbolism right there. Zero gravity. Depressurization and zero gravity. So they're upside down and they're saying, come on, jump. This is the leap of faith, okay? This is talking about, uh, I believe, at the North Pole, in order to get into the North Pole itself or the plasma volcano, you have to take a leap of faith, okay? Because if you're in the middle and this is the top of the volcano and you're going to jump in, you're used to gravity, you think you're just going to fall straight down. You take a leap of faith and float, right? And essentially you float to like one side or the other, and then you get to walk the rest of the way. I, I don't know if that's how it works, but that's how I imagine it. So this is the leap of faith. This is the jump program, okay? As I affectionately call it as well. This is where all of these characters in this movie have to sort of take a second, clear their consciousness, like clear, the, clear their energy out, whatever they have to do, and they have to take this leap of faith, right? So that's what that is. So this guy gets sucked up instead of down. And then he's like, am I dead? Good question, bro. Yeah, this you're in heaven right now, okay? That's what heaven is. This is the fractal verse. This is the, the macrocosm above. So this is a concept of heaven, right? And as you can see, up in the heavens, many things are possible. It's possible to just create things from pure thought, which goes back to and, and harkens back to the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, right? The Emerald Tablets talk about how Thoth... Um, was shown how worlds are created and stuff. And he was taken out into quote-unquote space where the quote-unquote gods just merely thought things and brought them into existence. That's exactly what you're seeing right here in this movie. Everything, all this land, all these landmarks, they're memories that people have. And he says, you're saying this is like a dream? And she says, it's memories. He says, whose memories? She says, everyone in a coma. <clears throat> everyone in a coma. I hate this scar right here in my face. Go away, scab. Anyway, oh well, it was worth it. I had a I had a, a fun a fun uh tipsy Halloween night and I totally won a costume contest. So I fell down. 
<laughs> Anyways, uh, so yeah, these are memories. Everything you're seeing is memories. There's nothing new under the sun. It's all on repeat. It's a movie being played over and over and over. Everyone who's in a coma comes to the same place here, right? Who are they talking about when they say everyone who's in a coma? Remember, this is all representative of our world. They're talking about you. They're talking about us, all of us. Everyone who's in a coma comes to the same place. They come here, right? So whenever you come into this world and you leave the beauty of space, because this is actually the reverse, you fall asleep. You come into a coma, okay? And all these people who are here in our world, we get amnesia. We don't remember. We barely remember our childhood. Like our memories just get sucked right out. We are in a constant state of coma. She says our brains store memories like an electromagnetic field. Wow, imagine that. An electromagnetic field can store memories. Hmm, there's a giant electromagnetic field around our world. <laughs> and if you're in a coma, those memories become your reality. This is deep. I like this movie. Now check this out when they look up, right? It looks like a huge cobweb or something. What we don't remember or never knew doesn't exist. So therefore, when you're watching all this sci-fi, all this fantasy, all these fictional tales and old wives' tales and children's nursery rhymes and stories and all this nonsense that doesn't make sense, it's completely senseful. I try to make that sound cool. I'm going to be honest. I try to think of something last second. Dang, it didn't sound cool. Anyways, um, it makes sense. It's all real. Okay, nothing is truly made up. It's just all mixed up. That's all. <laughs> all right, you guys are cracking me up in the chat. All right, so uh, what are those people in the street? All right, so let's see. I just want to take a picture of this, I think, to show you what it would look like if our dome of the sky were to just fall apart and you would be able to see beyond you would see stuff a lot like this i imagine probably a more colorful more energetic more beautiful and amazing looking you know right here it kind of looks sort of dead looking oh they uh, she says they aren't people i'm telling you those are memories she's talking about those people we saw earlier that were sort of degrading and falling apart as they were walking along now check this out this part's interesting in the movie they get to this sort of warp zone okay this warp this warp area it's inside of this bus now i thought this was super interesting because i play fortnite and on fortnite the way you get into the fortnite world or you go from one world to another is through a bus right this bus i've i've seen this concept of bus being the method of transport from world to world i thought it was an interesting connection so they go into this bus and it's got it's all blue like like our sky so it's, it's symbolically it's like they're going through the sky in order to get to another place and he says what does this thing fly right he thinks he thinks that too he thinks he doesn't understand how you could go through the bus that's because this is all happening symbolically like walking through the mirror the mirror is not you can't really go through a mirror i've thought of it i know you have too i know you i know all of you guys have looked at mirrors and said hmm how is this how would that be possible there's some way to go through a mirror or maybe you feel like Beings are watching you from the other side of the mirror, right? That's because the mirror, there's truth to that, and it resonates with your soul. The mirror represents the dome of our world, the sky up there, the great glass ceiling, the hardest glass ceiling, whatever you want to call it. That's the mirror above us, okay? And when you go through the mirror, you're going beyond our sky, right? Beyond our skyline, which is where the aliens are or whatever. All right, anyway. Uh, he says, think wormhole, but actually it's a memory gap. Interesting. So therefore, from our world to another world, there would be some sort of a memory gap. That's also shown in like a lot of sci-fi movies. And she's like, you were waiting for the Reapers to come over. I just got that because I forgot what they were called. They're called Reapers, which is interesting too, right? Like uh, those black beings, like they're the Reapers. They're the ones that are out to destroy. Their mission is to seek out and destroy and kill and, and make way for life, right? for the life that is coming to grow. It's all a part of life. It's not good or bad. It just is. He says, I don't remember what my name was. That's a part of the plasma apocalypse. When you go from world to world, there is amnesia that happens. You're going through huge electromagnetic barriers and electro electronic fields, electric fields and stuff. Like, yeah, I imagine that people probably have a problem with amnesia and losing their memories. 
right? There's EMPs and stuff. That's why NASA and these other space places, that's why they're preparing so much. That's why they have the proper equipment to keep them from being affected in that manner, right? But a lot of people in our world will wake up with amnesia. She says, you can't wake up. Now just accept that. We have people like that in our world, right? You can't wake up. They don't want you to wake up, right? Uh, they're basically telling you to like stop looking into these conspiracies, stop this and that. Now, sometimes they have really good reason. I'll be the first person to admit that um, because you can take it way too far. You can lose your ground. You can become ungrounded and just fall, free fall through the rabbit hole and go insane. I, I know you can because I've been close myself. It's not fun. But then you have these naysayers that are like, just stop, just give up. Like you can't wake up from this dream. Well, you can and you can't. I see it both ways. Because if we look at it individually, no, our place is not to wake up from this experience right now. Our purpose is to have this experience right now. That's what it's for. This is the whole uh this is, this is the whole playground. This is the stage of life. This is, this is what we created to be used. So put it to use. Now, in the grand, grander scheme of things, we, we are awake. We have woken up already. We really can't sleep. It's just an illusion. But that's a lot deeper. She says your body is in a coma and you are here. Think about that. Your body is in a coma and you are here. Then they then they have like these rips in reality when people dream. And when they dream, they see the real world. Isn't that interesting? So it's like they're telling you the real world is the dream world. And the dream world out there, the heavens, Shambhala, space, I don't know, whatever people call it. All right. Uh, the Elysian fields. That's my favorite reference. Okay. Because I believe it looks more like fields that you would see with like things waving around and growing or whatever out there, then it would empty space and marbles bumping into each other. Oh, was there anything else right there? No, that was it. All right, so as you can see, there's this whole redemption thing. This I believe represents like the blue beam that shoots up and branches out, becomes a tree of life. It's going through the clouds, which represents like the smoke that covers the world. It's not really smoke, it's um, mist. It's fog, right? Dreams are tricky. You can get lost. He's talking about the maze that we live in, right? You live in the dream right now. You can get lost in this dream. You can get distracted in this dream. You can forget the purpose of this whole entire maze or forget that you're even in one. You can totally get lost here. And he's right. And he says, this guy's talking about uh, time differential. The time differential between our world and how time works here within the enclosed world, pressurized world that we live in and out there. Time works a lot different. Why does time work different? I don't know if time itself works different. It's very possible, but I lean more towards um, the conditions exist beyond to extend our lifespans. So those people out there, you know, they experience time a lot slower than we do out here because our lifespans are super tiny. So we're on fast forward trying to get everything done real quick before we die and get reincarnated again. Out there, they have plenty of time, like forever. And that's what he's talking about. He's talking about, he says one day in reality is several months in coma, right? So I don't know if that's vice versa or whatever, but that's how it works. He says, you can live here thousands of years and here is in the coma world, which is the fractal verse or the, the macrocosm. It's all a part of the fractal verse. Okay. We're, we are the mesocosm of our fractal, our portion of the fractal verse. Actually, wherever you are is the mesocosm for you. Okay. Until you enter into another cosm or another world, then you're a slider and you're going from one transition to another. I hope that makes sense. Anyways. Uh, so I took a picture of this. This shows all of the different giant statues right? That people have memories of, and I guess they group them together in some section of this coma, which represents a portion of the brain that retains certain memories, right? This also represents the Titans, that things grow to be gigantic out there, okay? The giants and the titanic beings that exist beyond our world, they grow to huge sizes. And so this is a this is a tunnel that they mention in the movie, and this is another symbol for those um, 
those plasma conduits that take you from realm to realm. You'll see trains in the sky, subways in the sky, all that stuff is symbolism for the circuits of time or the plasma conduits that take you from place to place, right? The pathways of the black holes that open up in different worlds. There's another shot of it. He says, here we lose our memories. We, we've, we lose ourselves, basically, right? So he's talking about the whole amnesia concept again. It's not easy to slide from world to world or to experience this cyclical apocalypse because conditions happen that basically reset the brain, okay? I mean, I don't know how much to what extent that is, and it may depend on other things, but amnesia is definitely a symptom of this. He says, you find yourself dreaming about your dreams. So, and this is the concept that all we see or seem is but a dream within a dream. That's a concept age old, way before Edgar Allan Poe, that everything is really just a dream. And we experience dreams within dreams. And in the dream world, when we start to dream, when we go to sleep at night, we're escaping this world. We're getting glimpses of greater realities, okay? We're being told messages and things of that nature. It's very deep when you can pay attention to your dreams. He says, can they, can they see us? He says, no, they sense us. Now, if this thing represents plasma that comes down into our world, the destructive plasma, right? And they sense him, they can't see him. That means he's more of an ethereal entity, which means that he is reading their energy or their auras or their vibe. And basically they're determining based on the vibration of the person, whether or not to kill them. Because as you see in the movie, Sometimes these black things kill people, but sometimes they save them and they leave them alone. He says, we produce a signal, a frequency that's called your aura. That's called your vibe, your spirit, your vibration, right? Good news is you can change your vibe anytime. You can work on it. It can be molded. It can be crafted and shaped, okay? You don't have to be stuck in depressed or sad or anxious or worried or jealous or hateful or angry or scared. You can break free. You can start different things. And you can, no matter how old you are, I promise you, you can always continue to start making little changes that grow and solidify into a complete change into you being what you really wanted to be your whole life. So that's that for that. All right. Anyway, so there's another picture, fractal verse. Uh, these, uh, these reapers, they go up into this like ice world that's up there and they can't get through in their when what they see is they just see that the water continues but there is a there's a warp there's a wormhole between the water and down here so the the people actually went under the water and they were safe from these reapers they would just stood up there instead of following them down like they could have which means that there's a there is an opening this okay basically i'm rambling basically this is antarctic Antarctica. This is the dome of the world, whatever you want to call it. And this is an opening there. And that's why you see the reapers just on the other side, unable to get in. Okay, good. So um, he starts to wake up and the, the sky air starts to open. This is interesting to me because just when people start to wake up in our world and in our modern times, it's right when the sky will start to open. Okay, people will become the most enlightened and awakened right before the end. You'll start seeing people awake and awake and awake and, you know, grow in their ideas and their and, and the, I mean, along with that will come a lot of like clashing and stuff and, you know, bickering and stuff like that as, as people offer up alternatives to the mainstream. You'll see that a lot right before the end. Boom. Then the sky opens up and um and then uh, a whole different world comes as the new age appears. Anyway, so this guy's the architect. So with his mind, he starts to create. He throws out these bridges and stuff. He starts to create this whole city. That's just this sort of shining, shimmering, heaven-like city, which is what they're showing you. They're showing you like heaven or the heavens, right? And as you can see, it's just kind of floating there. There's a bridge to enter into it. And I'm, of course, this popped out. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta take a, a screenshot, right? A bright new life. And it's got the all seeing eye with the plasma swirling around it right there. That shows you, this is what we're talking about. Okay. That's the eye in the sky. It's the hole that opens up the eye of God, the eye of Ra, um, the eye of Horus, right? This is the all seeing eye that opens up. It's just a hole in the sky in the big, you know, um, 
what do you call that? Eye lens? Man, I forgot what that's called. Contact lens, right? That basically sits over our world. So that's what that is. And then, of course, you got the blue beam there. Rainbow bridge. Now, this shows you that 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 evil black being that you thought was just out to kill everybody wasn't. It was reading auras and it was on a search and destroy. It's on a cleansing mission. It's there to get rid of bad vibes. It goes around killing like, you know, just like Jason Voorhees, basically people that are bad people or, you know, symbolic of bad people or whatever. And that's the end. That's the end. I feel like we, I, th I feel like we went pretty fast through that movie. What'd you guys think of coma? How many people, how many people enjoyed this presentation, even though you did not see the movie? I'm just curious. Oh, uh, soul synthesis says I just tuned, turned in, tuned in. What's the, what's the movie? You know what? I find that interesting. People always ask what's the movie when I put the movie in the title. So like, I'm not sure what else to do about that, except for maybe like put it on the screen, I guess I could do that. I could totally put it right here in the middle, right? I could totally do that from now on. So thank you. Thanks for the reminder. Oh, uh, let's see here. I think that's it. I think I'm good. Uh, I'm going to roll the new credits. I worked on these credits for like three hours. So I'm going to see you guys next time. I'm sorry. Once I get, once I get my new equipment, my new computer, um, then I'll probably do more stuff, but right now, like the computer can't handle a lot. And plus, I'm just gonna be honest, life is super busy right now. I just got promoted. Yay. I got promoted. Yay. My book is selling and people are looking into my book. Yay. Anyways, enjoy these credits until next time. I'm Jay Dreamer saying good vibes and goodbye.